I get asked about it all the time. So today, let's do this. Here's a list of 10 plus sewing tools that I personally use regularly in my sewing and that I think are worth every single penny. I will let you in on how I use them, why I use them, and what makes them so special and so valuable in my personal opinion and in my personal sewing. And here's a quick note. Remember that each one of us is different, therefore our sewing is different, our techniques are different. So don't treat this as a shopping list, but instead have fun, enjoy, and I truly hope that perhaps you will see and learn something new and interesting today. First up is a hot hem ruler. And while a lot of these tools that I'll be sharing with you today I've used for many, many years, this is actually one of the newest additions. So basically it's a ruler that you can actually press over with your hot iron or with your steam iron. And I remember, I think it was made out of nylon. It does get hot as you press on it, but within a couple of seconds it really does cool down. So I don't burn myself on it when I press the hems or anything else that I'm working on. And that's basically one of the reasons why I got it because sometimes I would have a really bad habit pressing over a metal ruler. I know, not the smartest thing to do, please, don't do it. I did burn myself a couple of times. So this definitely is a great little replacement. And I had it for, I believe about six months. I do like using it, especially when hemming wide leg pans made out of viscose or anything else that's super drapey, super fluid. These rulers almost have um, a texture and feel of like felt. So the material doesn't slip off of it. So this definitely is a winner. Now I do like to press over things and over cardstock templates. I do that all the time for pockets. I do that for collar stands, I do that for the top collars. So this definitely is not going to replace that because those are very unique shapes. But for everything else like an inverted corner, rounded corner, or to measure a hem, this is definitely a nice little tool. It saves time, it's effective, and it doesn't get mushy if I do get water in it accidentally like it does with cardstock. Next up is a tool that you see basically in every single sewing pattern drafting video that I do. In any video where I need to press or iron something, this is what you see. And this is my pressing mat. Now before anybody says anything, I don't have an ironing board. So this completely substitutes that for both sewing purposes and also ironing and pressing clothes as they come out of laundry. You see me use it on my table, you see me use it on the floor. It does however get a little bit of condensation if you do use quite a bit of steam, but it was never really such a big problem for me. At first, many years ago, I did use a piece of batting with a piece of cotton on top of it as my pressing mat and my ironing board. And the reason why I switched to this was very simple. At one point I used up that cotton and I used up that batting for some project. So I thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and have a dedicated piece that is specifically meant for this task. This one was a gift from my sewing friend. I've been using it for a couple of years I think now and I know it looks small but I swear it's mighty. I think it illustrates perfectly what I use this little guy for. And because I do work with sergers on a regular basis for all sorts of fabrics, both knits and wovens, then whenever I am working on a project, this little guy is always there and such a big help, makes it super easy and effortless. And I do have like a little basket of tools that always sits on my sewing table and it definitely has earned its place in that little basket. Now, since we are talking about specialty tools, I really wanted to add that years ago when I first started sewing, you know, I thought that all of these specialty tools, and by the way, I don't have many, these are just a couple. So I thought that all of these specialty tools are just a really big nonsense, just a really big gimmick, and that if I am using specialty tools, then perhaps I'm just really not that great or good at what I'm doing. So years have passed and I gained some knowledge and I gained some experience, and you know, I have come to change my opinion. I have come to realization about what I like and how I go about techniques and how I like to complete them. And some of you might be thinking it's a complete nonsense pressing over a cardstock template or over a hot ruler like this one, but I do like it and I do think that it does give a better outcome in certain sewing situations. So I did change my opinion. I do think that you don't have to have a lot of tools, but if there is one or two or a couple specialty tools that really make your sewing easier, smoother, more convenient, and give you a better result and a peace of mind as you go about construction of a garment or a project, then why not? 
These two are a crucial part of everything I do sewing wise and I get asked about them all the time. So let's take a look. I say crucial because I draft my own pattern. So everything that I wear that I make for my husband or for my little one is self-drafted. This is self-drafted, that is self-drafted. A lot of what you see on the channel is self-drafted. And for that, of course, I need tracing paper. So that's what this is. Each roll is enough for, I would say about six to nine months. It just really depends on how much I use and what kind of projects I do. Because if you draft pants, obviously it's a bigger, longer pattern draft. And if you draft the top, like you see right over here for a future project, then it takes very little space. Now, a lot of people who draft their own patterns do use tracing paper that has little dots on it. So that way it's easier to stay on the grain and everything else. This one doesn't have that. It's actually a medical paper, the one that they use in like doctor's offices, but you can buy a bolt of that. And I find that it's actually pretty easy to work with that uh, if you can keep everything straight and lined up. So I don't really have a problem with that. This one is a little bit different. This is Swedish tracing paper and it's actually almost like a woven paper that you can sew through. So if you have made your pattern draft and you uh, don't want to do a muslin or you don't have a need for muslin, but you do want to have a check of certain measurements or sort of placement of the darts or design elements or whatnot, this you can actually sew together. Now I don't use it as often as I use my regular tracing paper, but it definitely has a really good place in my sewing room. It is pricier though, so maybe that's one of the reasons why I don't use it as often because I'm often very mindful of, do I actually need to use this for my pattern draft or if I can just go with my regular tracing paper and just be done with it. These need no introduction. I'm sure you know what those are. You've seen in my videos time and time again. I've been using them for years and years. Of course, these are bias tape makers. I make my own bias tape 99.9% .9 of the time. I actually don't remember when was the last time I used store-bought bias tape. So these come in handy, especially when I am working on a large project, when I bind my seams with bias tape, like for example, over here on the armholes, or when I'm working on a lot of projects at the same time, like for example, Project Dresser Girl around the world. So these definitely have a very special, a very useful place in my sewing room and they get a ton of use. And I think back in the day I paid probably under $10 for the set of four of these and it came just as that. I know some sets come with an owl and a couple of other things but my set was just these four and I can tell you that it was definitely worth it. Now for this next one I actually have a question for you. Now do you have a botkin or a point turner in your sewing room? Room. Now, I happen to have neither one of those, but instead <laughs> I use a knitting needle size 10. This is plastic, features a pretty dull tip over here, and I just so happened to use this, uh, I don't know, ages ago for turning a point, and then I used this to push elastic through the casing, and I just carried on with using this with various degrees of success, I might say. So I'm pretty sure an actual point turner and an actual botkin will do a better job. I just never really had a chance or I don't know, I just never really bond those two tools. But instead, yes, with various degrees of success, I use a knitting needle. Now, while we're here, here is another tool, actually two tools that make your sewing and actually more of like pattern drafting life so much easier. And that of course is a French curve ruler. And the other one is a straight angle ruler, 90 degree angle ruler. This is extremely helpful because as I mentioned, my tracing paper doesn't have any little dots. So in order to keep everything straight and on the angle, this is a really big help. And a lot of times people have really big ones, really small ones. This is what came in a set of five rulers that you see right over here. And these are the two that I use all the time. This next one is a combination of multiple tools of the same kind. So we're just going to lump them all together. And I'm also going to throw in a bulky seam jumper. And of course, we're talking about different machine presser feet. This one is an edge joining or edge stitching foot that I actually use for top stitching different parts of the garment, like for example, collar and collar stand and also knit necklines as well. Basically anywhere where you have top stitching at the joining seam where you can rest this little lip, this works really great and creates a neat result in a fraction of a time that it usually takes you to top stitch with a regular foot. So this is definitely a really big help. Next one, of course, is a quarter inch presser foot. You all know that I love this a ton. 
line it up with the edge of the presser foot and you get a quarter inch seam allowance all the time. This next one you're all familiar with, of course, it's a zipper foot. Now, this one is actually a foot that lets you mark seam allowance and I usually do it with a little marker and it does really help. Sometimes I will place a little tape on the base of my sewing machine so that way I can use that as a seam allowance marker. But this is also a great solution if, for example, using a little piece of tape for some reason doesn't work out for that particular project. And this, of course, is a bulky seam jumper. Now, I tested this about, I would say, five, six, maybe even seven months ago, and I use it a lot ever since purchasing it. Now, before having this, of course, I used anything that was sort of available, so that way I can prop my presser foot in order to be able to go over the bulky seam. But this definitely makes the job a little bit easier. Now, almost all of these actually came in a set like this, which was a gift from my husband many years ago. <laughs> If you've noticed a common denominator throughout the entire video, a lot of these tools are received as gifts from my dear friends and from my husband. And uh, I, yeah, so I, I kind of happen to have them by chance and I happen to love and use them. So as I mentioned, at first I really thought that specialty tools are just kind of like, ah. But some of these are really great. I think this is a kit of 32 and out of those 32, I use maybe like five on a regular basis. So you definitely don't need as many, but those five that I I do use definitely have made my life a little bit easier. This next one is fun on one hand, but also really useful. And I thought to include this as a little extra because it's not necessarily something that I use every single day. Well, it kind of is, but not actively. So I thought this could be a really great idea for you as well. So this is a pin cushion that has been divided in four different sections and each of the sections is labeled. One is labeled stretch, um, microtex, universal, and other. So basically when you are changing needles on your sewing machine, and that's something that I've noticed after myself that I don't really have anywhere where to put them because I don't actually have a pin cushion and they're all just in a little box like that. So I don't actually have a pin cushion for my pins. So this is definitely really helpful because once one needle goes out and it's still good for the next project but I'm just using a different type of fabric I stick it in here take another needle that I need and continue with my project and this was actually a gift from another sewing friend she actually sells these as a kit that you can sew yourself in her shop she did not ask me to say that at all I just really like the pin cushion so I will leave all of the links for you guys in the info box right underneath this video now these might not seem like an actual sewing tool but in my opinion these are the best sewing tools so if you would have stripped away everything that I have sewing wise and leave me just with a sewing machine and you would have told me you have one more sewing tool that you can pick from whatever you have and that's it that I would <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely reach for my sewing books 100%. Now, perhaps in this age of digital learning, we don't really consider a book as a way of learning how to sew or how to discover new techniques or how to exercise and practice. But in my personal opinion, it's actually the best way how to do it. And again, I'm speaking from a personal experience because when I open a book and when I see a technique or when I see um, how to do this or that, I first have to read the text. I then have to analyze that and sort of like <laughs> digest it, then of course I have to apply it and practice. So I actually have to do it in order to learn it. And when I do it, I then have to compare the result to what it shows in the book. So that way I can see whether I did that the right way or perhaps I skipped a step or I did something differently. And you know what? A couple of times what happened was I did it in a different way, which in my opinion was easier. And therefore I actually adapted that as a new technique for myself. So instead of doing exactly as it said in a book, I did it slightly different. I liked it. So it's a little bit different than watching a video and I definitely learn better from the books. I also like that you can choose your own pace. You can read it before bedtime, <laughs> which is what I do oftentimes. And of course, it can be as a resource for references whenever you're working on any given sewing project and you don't have to buy the sewing books. Take a look in your local library. Perhaps they do have a really good sewing book or two, or perhaps you can actually request them to get a sewing book for you and maybe it will benefit all of the other members of the library as well. 
Now these are heat erasable pens and washable markers. Neither one of those is of a sewing brand, but you can find a similar product from a big sewing brand as well. These ones were just bought at the big box retailer and I have found that they work really great for me. I use them for marking my patterns, marking the placement of the darts, and anything else that I need to do on the pattern directly. So when I do any pattern drafting in my videos, you often see these binders and a lot of times people say, oh, what are those, where did you get those? So the binders are just very generic binders from any other office supply store. But what's inside of them, that's what makes them very valuable, at least to me, because as I mentioned, I do draft my own patterns. So inside of these, you will find different bodice blocks, different pan blocks, different skirt blocks, different other patterns that I have drafted that I know that I really like and that I'm going to be using time and time again. So all of that goes in one of the binders. The other binder features different techniques, different instruction sheets. It features different swatches from the fabrics that I liked, maybe from the fabrics that I have ordered swatches for, but I didn't end up purchasing, so that way I have that as a reference. So these are definitely a work of a couple of years, and I use them for reference, I use them for creativity, I use them for pattern drafting, I use them for sketching. So this is my whole entire pattern drafting world. Now sometimes we actually don't explore the full potential of the tools that we already have. So if you have a serger and you've been wondering what else your serger can actually do, then this video is for you. I'll show you five techniques, very simple, very easy, but very useful. And perhaps you've never even tried them before. So click over there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.